Hey folks, it's Martin and I'm back and I wanted to do another playthrough of my print and play copy of the game Sojourn, A Journey Through Time, for two reasons. Um, one, because I am still uh, horribly addicted to this game and I've been playing it over and over. Uh, and second and more importantly, in my first playthrough video, I realized after the reviewing the rules afterward that I was playing wrong. No big surprise there if you've watched any of my other videos or if you know me on BGG or on Facebook uh, in the gaming groups, you'll know that I am notorious for uh, playing the games wrong, which is really not a good look for primarily a solo gamer. Anyway, we're going to do another playthrough. I'll see you at the table. Okay, here we are set up for our uh, next game, our playthrough of Sojourn, A Journey Through Time. Super quick recap of the setup. You are the time traveler, and you are trapped in the Jurassic period right now. 250 million BC, this meeple represents you, the time traveler. Now you have a handy dandy time traveling watch, and these temporal charges are how many times you can use that watch, and these red cubes are your health. Now, these uh, green spaces here represent these four cubes, which represent the uh, pieces of the time sphere, which have been shattered into many fragments, and they have been scattered throughout space-time, represented by this deck of destinations. So your job is you're going to have to go through and find them. Now, to help you out, you've got this time stream deck, and we have our opening starting hand of uh, time stream cards here. And these time stream cards will give you uh, some benefits and some capabilities that will um, help you along in your job as the time traveler. All right, let's get started with our playthrough. So our traveler is stuck in the distant past, Jurassic period, 250 million BC. They need a destination to jump to. We are going to engage our handy dandy time traveling watch and use up one temporal charge to uh, flip open the top card of the destinations deck. What is our destination? It is the Battle of Gettysburg, July 1863. It will. To travel here, we will have to drop all of our time stream cards. Oh boy, that's a lot. And it's going to cost two temporal charges. If we're able to pay those costs, this is a battle. There is a 50% risk that we're going to suffer two points of damage uh, just by jumping to this time period. Uh, the bonus will be gaining one time stream card. So we will put that destination above our current location. And let's see if our cards have anything that can help us here. Uh, we've got a Quantum Flux card. This will reduce risk of a destination by 10%. Might come in handy. A uh, Fracture card will add a new destination to the timeline ahead for no cost. This could be a good thing to add another option for destination. Uh, this Loop card will allow us to return to any previous destination uh, further back in time. Not uh, useful right now. Might come in handy later. Paradox card will allow us to travel to a destination for no time stream drop or temporal charge cost. This is a very handy card because this would allow us to sidestep this very expensive um, uh, cost to be able to travel to the Battle of Gettysburg. However, we still have to deal with this very high risk of damage. And we've got this temporal battery which will restore one temporal charge. Okay, what do we want to do? Do we want to go there or do we want to get another option? I'm thinking I am going to play this fracture card and add a new destination to the timeline ahead for no cost. Okay, we play that one. And what is our another destination? It is um, the Lost Colony, August 1590. No cost to travel to this card. And no surprise there, there is a 90% risk of suffering three damage and a bonus of gaining two Trime Stream cards. So I'm going to put this to the left of Gettysburg. Uh, guys, I have to be honest with you, there is, these are a couple of not great options to jump to right now. Okay, here's what I want to do. I don't want to travel to the Lost Colony because of the very high risk. So Gettysburg is our option. Um, we have a 50% chance of suffering two damage. But we do have a way to avoid these very high costs to jump to this location. We have this Paradox card, which will allow us to sidestep the time stream drop and temporal charge cost. So I want to play this Paradox card playing that right now and that will allow our traveler to jump to Gettysburg there you go and we didn't have to pay these costs now the act of jumping and this is what I uh, messed up in my last um, playthrough the act of jumping will open up a new destination 
So what is that new destination? Well, here we go. It is a time fragment. So let's place our time fragment here and let's figure out where in history that time fragment is trapped. It is trapped at the American Revolution, April 1775. It has a drop, card drop cost of two, temporal charge cost of two, 50% chance of suffering three damage, bonus of two time stream cards. Okay, there is a time fragment over there in the American Revolution. Now that we've jumped to Gettysburg, let's resolve our risk. But before we do that 50%, let's take a look at our hand here. We have at least one Quantum Flux card. It will reduce the risk of a destination by 10%. Uh, probably a good thing to play now. So let's play that. And that 50% drops down to a 40%. Okay. Uh, and this is going to be my makeshift um, dice tray here. We're looking for 40 or better. 40 or better. And what do we get? We get a 97. Excellent. So we do not suffer that two damage and we gain one time stream card. That time stream card is a loop card. It returns to any open destination from any timeline with an earlier date for no drop, cost, or risk. That is a very nice card indeed. Okay, uh, so, so far so good. We avoided costs, we avoided damage, and we gained a time stream card by jumping to Gettysburg. Okay, here's where we are. Our time traveler is now in Gettysburg. Now, we have an option to travel to the American Revolution. Why is that important? Because we know that there is a time fragment there, so it's super critical for us to get there. But we want to avoid this drop cost and this temporal charge cost. Problem, we don't have any cards in our hand that will allow us to sidestep those costs. But we do have those two loop cards. And this loop card is going to allow us to return to any open destination from any timeline with an earlier date. So check this out. Our traveler is currently at Gettysburg, 1863. We have an option to go to the Lost Colony in 1590 AD. And I think that's a good thing to do. So we will play a loop card over here. And that is going to allow our traveler to travel to the Lost Colony. And we will sidestep these costs. And we don't have to worry about this 90% risk of uh, three suffering three damage. Plus, we gain those two time stream cards. Hopefully, we gain a card that is going to allow us to sidestep the high costs of traveling to the American Revolution. We get a quantum flux, reduced risk of destination risk by, eight, by 10%. And one more card. We get a Fracture card, add a new destination to the timeline ahead for no cost. All right, we did not get the cards we wanted, but let's see what we can work out here. And have to remember, because we did make a jump to the Lost Colony, the act of jumping opens up a new destination. So what is that new destination? It is Siege of Elysia, September 7, 52 BC. It is a time of war. So um, there's no cost to travel there, but there's very high chance of getting a lot of damage, also a chance of getting a lot of cards as a bonus. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. Our traveler needs to get the time fragment that is currently here in the American Revolution, but I'm leery of that 50% uh, uh, risk, as well as I don't wanna give up two cards and give up two temporal charges to travel there. Now, uh, we do have another open location, the Siege of Elysia. Uh, it's a time of war with a 90% chance of suffering a lot of damage. But we've got these loop, this loop card right here, and that loop card is going to allow us to travel to an earlier destination in time. So remember, we're currently in 1590 AD, um, and this definitely is uh, before uh, this time of, the, of our current uh, location. So let's do that. Let's play this loop card, right? And that will allow us to jump to the Siege of Elysia, and we don't have to worry about that 90% risk of damage. And we gain these three cards. Now, hopefully, one of these three cards is the card we're looking for. It is another loop card over here. That's the card number one. Card number two is a temporal battery. It will restore one temporal charge, always nice. Card number three is a paradox card. This is the card we were looking for. Travel to a destination for no time stream drop or temporal charge cost. So that's the one we were hoping for. Now. Let's remember, because we did another jump, the act of jumping, op jumping opens up a new destination, which is 
Well, all these like horrible uh, locations with a lot of stuff going on, a lot of bad stuff going on. So the Great Chicago Fire of 1871, and uh, there is a 75% chance of suffering damage here. So we will place that here to the right. Oh, sorry, it's uh, it's, it's four years. Uh, yes, that is correct. 1871, which is further ahead in time from the American Revolution. Okay, enough uh, messing about. Our traveler wants to go to the American Revolution and grab the time fragment that's hidden inside that location. Let's first uh, play a time stream card that will allow us to sidestep these very high costs, this drop cost and this temporal charge cost. So um, we have a paradox card over here and we're gonna play it. That allows us to uh, travel to the American Revolution and because we were able to travel there, we will take this time fragment and we will place a green marker on this to represent that we have uh, collected one of the four fragments of the time sphere that we need to jump back home. Okay, we are here in the American Revolution. We played a card to sidestep these costs. Now let's resolve the risk of suffering damage here. Uh, before that, let's play this Quantum Flux card, which will reduce the risk of a destination by 10%. So this 50% will drop down to 40%. Okay, 40 or better. We want 40 or better. Survey says we rolled, oh boy, 37%. So we didn't quite make it. So as we jump to the American Revolution, our traveler catches a stray bullet or a stray musket shot and suffers three damage. Yowza. Now, let's remember that the act of traveling has opened up yet a new destination for no cost, which turns out to be, drum roll please, Gutenberg Printing Press, 1447 AD. And let us put that option right there. Also, let's not forget to get our bonus here. We gained two time stream cards traveling to the American Revolution. Let's check out what those cards end up being. We have another loop card. Let's place that here on top of this other earlier loop card. And we have another temporal battery reduces one temporal, restores rather one temporal charge. We've got three of those. And we've got these two fracture cards as well. So here are the things I don't like about our current range of options. This Gutenberg printing press will, will require us to drop two cards and three temporal charges to travel there. And um, it is low risk, I don't have to worry about that. The Great Chicago Fire will drop one card and uh, cost one temporal charge, but there is a very high risk of suffering damage. So I want more options. So I want to play this Fracture card over here, which will add a new destination to the timeline ahead for no cost. So we play that, and we play a new timeline card. This one is the Crusades, August 1096 AD. Hmm, pretty high risk of damage as well but lower costs, okay? So we'll place that there. And you know what, since we have one more fracture card, let's go ahead and play that and just let's pull out a, yet another option of uh, where to jump to. And this one turns out to be the Hiroshima Atomic Attack, August 1945. Uh, like, uh, I'm noticing that all of these like uh, horrible places to travel to uh, have no cost and really high chance of suffering damage by uh, going there. So let's place that in the timeline as well. So what have we got? We've got uh, one place of conflict, the Crusades in 1096 AD, high chance of damage. We've got the printing press, uh, low risk of damage, but very high cost. We've got the Great Chicago Fire with high risk of damage. And we've got the Hiroshima atomic attack with really super high risk of damage. All right, here's what I'm thinking. We are currently at the American Revolution, 1775 AD. As we look at our uh, options here, our timeline, we have two locations that are earlier in the past to where we are now, Gutenberg Printing Press in 1447 AD and the Crusades in 1096 AD. And we've got these loop cards that will allow us to travel to an earlier destination, sidestepping cost and risk. So let's play this loop card right now. And let us travel to, well, the bonus doesn't matter, so it's one or one. So let's go to the earlier, well, let's actually, let's go to this one. Um, so our time traveler is going to now jump to the Gutenberg printing press, ignoring these costs, um, ignoring this risk, and gaining this uh, one time stream card bonus, which is a paradox card, travel to a destination for no uh, cost, a very great and handy card that I really like. And remember, jumping to this uh, new location 
opens up yet another location in the time stream. In this case, uh, another time of conflagration, the Vietnam War, with a 75% chance of suffering three damage. All right, let us jump to from the Gutenberg printing press in 1447 AD to this uh, the Crusades in 1096. How are we going to do it? By spending our last loop card, which will allow us to travel to an earlier destination and sidestep all the bad stuff that goes along with it. So we'll do that. So our time traveler is now jumping to the Crusades and sidestepping all the bad stuff and gaining the good stuff. One time stream card, which turns out to be a quantum flux, which will reduce the risk of a destination by 10%. Cool. And open up a new location, which turns out to be another battle, the Alamo. There's a 25% chance of uh, damage here, but the costs are very high. Now, fortunately, even as we place that in uh, 1836 AD over here, uh, if we take a look at our cards here, we have this Paradox card, which will allow us to sidestep those costs. So I think that I want to do that right now. Let's travel to the Alamo. And let's play this Paradox card, which will allow us to sidestep the time stream drop and temporal charge cost. So we don't have to worry about that. And let's resolve the 25% risk of suffering two damage. So here we go. We are want to roll 25 or better. And we rolled a 90. All right. So we do not suffer that two damage. And we gain two time stream cards. We add those to our hand. And these turn out to be quantum flux, reducing risk. Uh, and these stack, by the way. You can stack these, uh, reducing risk of, of a destination by 10. And we have another paradox card. Okay, great. Let's take stock. All right, as I take a look at our options here for where to jump to, they're all very bad options. This Great Chicago Fire, 75% risk of uh, suffering damage. This Hiroshima attack, 90% risk of suffering damage. And the Vietnam War, 75% risk of suffering damage. I want another option with less damage uh, risk. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use up a temporal charge. And that will allow us to open up a new destination, which turns out to be, okay, another time fragment. And let's figure out where that time fragment is stuck in history. Whoa, yet another time fragment. So there's actually two time fragments. And where are they located? They are located in the tearing down of the Berlin Wall, November 1989. Okay, so that is actually our most modern, uh, our latest spot in the timeline. And it's super critical to travel there because there are two time fragments. Now, very, very high cost indeed to be able to travel here. Drop three cards and give up four temporal charges. That said, we have this Paradox card which will allow us to sidestep uh, all of those costs. So let's go ahead and do that now. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Uh, our traveler travels to the tearing down of the Berlin Wall. And just like that, earns two time fragments, which now allows us to add these two markers to indicate that we now have three of the four required pieces of the time sphere to be able to jump back home. So we are getting very close to satisfying the requirements for the time traveler to get home and potentially win the game. Now, there's no risk of suffering damage here, and we gain one time stream card. So let's take a look at what that is. It is yet another Paradox card. These have been very handy for us in this game. And what new destination opens up as a result of jumping? It is the D-Day invasion in 1944. So let's put that over here to the left of the Hiroshima attack uh, and in front of the Great Chicago Fire. Okay. Looking good so far. All right, as we uh, examine our options for where to jump to, conflict, high risk of damage, high risk of damage, high risk of damage, high risk of damage. Don't like that. Let's burn another temporal charge, and that will allow us to open up another destination. And we hope that this has a lower risk of damage. We have the stock market crash. Uh, zero risk of damage, however, high costs. But again, we have the paradox card, which will allow us to sidestep those high costs. So I'm liking that. I am placing this uh, card over here in its proper position in the time stream. And our, um, time, our traveler is going to jump to the stock market crash of 1929. 
play this paradox card to sidestep that drop three and that pay four temporal charges. There's no risk of uh, damage here, and we gain one time stream card, which turns out to be bandages. Very nice, restores one health. Um, I'm not even going to place this in our uh, hand. I'm gonna use this right now, um, and I'm going to restore one health to our traveler. Very nice indeed. So our traveler is getting a little bit low on temporal charges, down to four. We have these uh, temporal batteries, and there's three of them, and there's no reason to hang on to them. Well, you know, actually there might be a reason to hang on to them. So you know what? I'll use one for right now, be a little conservative, to be able to add back one charge to our uh, temporal charges there, okay? And let's uh, figure out what else. So here is the really critical situation. As we take a look at our time stream cards in our hand, we only have these two quantum flux cards and uh, their effect is reducing risk of a destination by 10%. Those stack so we can reduce by 20%. And we have these two temporal batteries that restore a temporal charge. We don't have a paradox card uh, to allow us to sidestep super high costs. Um, and we have these uh, destination options here. So I'm thinking let's burn a temporal charge and reveal a new destination and see what that gets us. This is the DB Cooper hijacking. We can give up two cards, give up two charges of temporal charge and a very high risk of um, suffering damage here. Now that's only two points and we have five. So that's something that we might want to risk. But now the choice has become tough because let's just figure out where is uh, our location to jump to that is most advantageous? Or do we in fact burn yet another temporal charge and get another uh, option? Well, let's go ahead and do that. Temporal charge spent, another option for a destination, turns out to be the World Trade Center attacks 9-11, September 11, 2001. Again, very, very high risk of uh, getting damaged in this uh, location here. I'm just gonna put this guy down here. Uh, it's it's the uh, most modern in the timeline. Um, right now, um, I'm going to go ahead and figure out, let's just roll the dice. Let's burn one more temporal charge, expose one more destination. That destination turns out to be the Black Plague, another really high risk um, destination here. So that hasn't been working out for us so far. We are down to two temporal charges, which is critical. So we just have to figure out what our next move is going okay, to be. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. Um, we have health, that's the good news. We are very low on temporal charges. So far, I'm leery of getting rid of all of our time stream cards because um, if we have to pay costs and we don't have time stream cards to pay for them, we might get stuck in time and lose the game. That said, uh, we need to recharge a temporal charge. So let's use one of these batteries, these temporal batteries, to gain or restore one temporal charge. So let's go ahead and put one there. So we have three now. Now, which of these not great options are we going to travel to? Because they all have really high damage potential, damage risk. Uh, you know what? Oddly enough, I'm thinking about traveling to 9-11 because there's no cost, so I won't lose any cards or temporal charge to go there. Even though it's super high risk of um, taking damage, we can gain two cards from traveling here. So... Um, you know what, I'm gonna take that risk. I'm gonna to try to travel to 9-11. So um, let's go ahead and take this card and the traveler is traveling to 9-11. Now there is a 90% chance. Now I could use um, these quantum flux cards to lower that to 70% um, and we're gonna gain two cards from that. So this is what uh, quantum flux cards are for. So let's go ahead and do that. We turn in these two that 90% becomes a 70%. Okay, so we have to roll a 70 or better, 70 or better to avoid taking three damage. We get 22%. So uh, we fail to make the roll, we get three damage. So we are down to two damage points here, but we make it to 9-11 uh, and we get those two cards. So we get a loop card. It'll allow us to travel to the past. That's very good because we are now very, very far into the present. And we get Bandage, which will restore one health. That is a card in the nick of time. Let's play that right now and restore one health. Because obviously if our health goes down to zero, then we lose the game anyway. 
And let's not forget, the act of traveling to 9-11 and successfully making it there opens up a new destination. I'm hoping for a time fragment. It is not. It is the Germany Invades Poland card, September 1939. So that fits in between the Chicago Fire and the D-Day Invasion. Okay, here's what I think is a good next move. We can use this loop card to travel from 9-11 in 2001, where we are right now, to the Hiroshima attack of 1945. Why? Because that loop card will allow us to avoid this 90% risk of, dam of suffering four damage and gain three uh, cards. So I like that. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So we travel from 9-11 to the Hiroshima attack. And this loop card allows us to sidestep all of the potential risk associated with that location. Uh, because we successfully uh, traveled there, let's gain three time stream cards now. This is bandages. We, we should use that very soon. This is a temporal battery, which will allow us to uh, charge up our uh, handy dandy time uh, travel watch and more bandages. Very, very good indeed. And let's not forget, we open up a new destination because we traveled to Hiroshima. This is the Ides of March, March 15, 44 BC. Okay, 44 BC is absolutely the earliest event in our current timeline. Okay, first things first, let's heal up our traveler. Let us use these bandages and these bandages to go from three health to five health. Go ahead and discard those cards. All right, and we're also pretty low on temporal charges, but we might need these cards for cost. So what are our options here? I'm thinking that uh, traveling to the D-Day invasion is a good option because it won't, uh, we won't drop any cards here. It'll only cost us one charge. There is a 75% chance of suffering four damage, but we will gain three cards in return for that. And we do have five health, so it's not gonna kill us uh, if we fail that roll. So it's risky but I say we do it. So let's give up one temporal charge and our traveler is gonna to travel to the D-Day invasion of 1944 and let us resolve the 75% chance that we're going to suffer four damage here. So we have to roll 75 or better. Uh, we rolled 28% so we do suffer four damage. We are down to one. So that was painful but uh, in exchange for that, we gain three cards. So what are those cards? We get a Fracture card. And we get Bandages. I'm going to use that right now. So uh, you're not even going to hit my deck. Now we're up to two points. One more Time Stream card, Quantum Flux. Reduce risk of a destination by 10%. Okay, and what new destination opens up as a result? Hoping for a Time Fragment. Nope, not a Time Fragment. Bombing of Pearl Harbor, 1941. That slots in right in there. Let's figure out our next move. Okay, as we look over our options here, our time traveler is critically down uh, in health, or oh, down to two, and down to two temporal charge as well. Our location options are all uh, pretty high risk and uh, very just not great options to travel to. So you know what? Um, well, you know, right now we've got temporal batteries and uh, I think that it's a good time to play a temporal battery, even though we need some time stream cards, just to be able to give us more charge here. Now, let's play this fracture card to add another destination to the timeline ahead for no cost. Again, I am hoping against hope that this is a fr time fragment. Yes, okay, it is a time fragment. And where is a time fragment located? It is located in the Bolshevik Revolution 1917. The cost will be to drop all temporal batteries and a charge, a temporal charge of two. Oh boy, and we have three, so we can actually do that. There is a 50% risk of suffering three damage, so we only have two health points. So if we don't make that roll, that's gonna kill us. Um, but that's getting a little ahead of ourselves. Let us put this uh, Bolshevik revolution here in the time stream where it belongs. And uh, we have no choice. Our traveler has to go there to pick up that last um, fragment. So let's go ahead and do that now. So uh, let's resolve here. We have to drop all of our temporal batteries to be able to travel there. We have one, so let's drop that now. And we have to give up 
two uh, temporal charges to be able to travel that to there. So let's give up two. We have one temporal charge remaining. And we've, we've uh, satisfied that cost. So now we travel to the Bolshevik Revolution. We are there. And we are about to, if we successfully uh, stay here, we will acquire this piece of the time fragment. Why am I saying if we successfully stay here? Because this is the big hurdle right now. We have to get a 50 or better on our risk roll. Otherwise, we suffer three damage. If we suffer three damage with our two remaining damage, we die right here. Okay, so a lot is riding on this roll. If we roll 50 or better, then we have a good chance of being able to win the game. And survey says we roll an 88. Yes! So, we don't suffer that three damage, and we gain two time stream cards. One is a temporal battery, which will restore a temporal charge. So we'll want to do that in just a sec. And this one is another fracture card, which will add a new destination. Okay, we acquire this time fragment. That is the fourth and last time fragment that we need to acquire. And so now we are ready to jump back in time from the Bolshevik Revolution. Okay, folks, this is it, the pivotal moment. Our time traveler has traveled to the Bolshevik Revolution, has acquired four pieces of the time sphere, and now should be able to travel home. The rules say the win condition is if the traveler has four time sphere fragments and has at least one temporal charge or a paradox time stream card, they may travel home and win the game. Well, as it turns out, our traveler has one temporal charge cube left. They spend it, and the big moment, our time traveler is able to travel back home to April 2040 and win the game. Well, thank you for joining me on that playthrough of Sojourn, A Journey Through Time. After, my, after many attempts, I am very happy that I actually won the game this time in this playthrough. Although it was pretty epic, and um, when I edit this video, it's probably going to have to span at least two parts, maybe more. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I hope you had a lot of fun joining me on this playthrough. Until next time, this has been Martin. Thanks for watching.